dun 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 okay hey everybody welcome back to the burnout writer podcast glad to have you with us today we are going to be oh i almost forgot i almost forgot to introduce matt i'm here with my lovely co-host matt I, I got an introduction today. I'm very happy about it. I I even got, I was even included in the brief before the podcast when we were talking about what we were going to talk about. So today's a great day, y'all. I'm happy to be here. I made him feel me. special. Yeah. <laughs> once in a year. But on our podcast, we talk about mental health, gaming, social justice, and a lot of things that are trending in pop culture. But today we have the wonderful, lovely great shade of hair because i'm loving the pink right now yes rachel she is from the infinity podcast and she's also from the screen snark podcast and i had to say that slow because last time i said screen sharks and then we got on screen beans and it was a whole thing yeah (laughs) you know i i a wild rachel arrived this is going to devolve into chaos very quickly. We're already going to be well, best well, friends. All about chaos. Uh, Pokemon good, reference. Good, good. We're good. We're good. I <laughs> I acknowledge both of you deeply. Uh, Des and Matt, they're here on their show. Thank Who you. Who saw that one coming? I love. You can I like take that, that and record it us. forever. You know, that's, like that's right? like the first time that that's Keep ever it. happened. Thank oh. you. you can, yeah. You can always tell like a fellow podcaster because they come into this like with that same energy. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, yeah. it's not like, oh my God, what the yeah. hell am I doing here? No, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's like what we're here to do, right? We're here to put each other over, you know? Mm-hmm. like That is right. Lift each other up and all that why, stuff. Why else, why else would we – I mean, obviously, we'd all hang out indoors because we had to. But, you know – that's that's like the that's the thing like i want to learn about you you want to learn about me mm-hmm. let's be humans for yeah. other humans to human i love it but before we divulge anymore i want to let you guys learn a little bit about rachel and what she does on her podcast which are absolutely amazing and before we end tonight's show we will definitely have her drop all of her information down below so you can check it out because me and matt have been a part of the podcast and it was an incredible experience i have you did no you did the what what did you do matt i did the i did side quests for you mr dj stormageddon quests. matt oh, hasn't right. been on yet you haven't been yet. on yet but future podcast next. quest yeah he's probably because storm's like i don't need another matt in this place okay there's too many of us that's not true I there's feel like that's <laughs> it no feel it. has room feel for it. infinite mats <laughs> <laughs> that's a podcast idea right there too anyway sorry destiny go on no i was just that's, gonna say well, that's just called a podcast community it's just infinite mats. True. we have a little community of podcasters living in pods on casting, the island of cast away. casting nets casting yeah. their mats yeah huh? and magic <laughs> rachel mm-hmm. we're gonna be good friends i like you already <laughs> corny versus corny i love it what was i gonna say i forgot you guys distracted me oh i was gonna say the reason why i forgot that you hadn't been on a podcast is because matt has so much going on like he has <laughs> he's he does so many things mm-hmm. that i just assume that you had been on the show for some reason but i guess not but Happens. you will be soon mm-hmm. yeah awesome anyway all right rachel yeah tell us uh, a little bit about yourself tell our listeners who you are what you yeah. do where they can find you and all that good thing uh well yes you can find me first and foremost uh on the internet uh with the two previously mentioned podcasts uh the infinity podcast which is a weekly uh, pop culture breakdown dissecting the intersection between popular comics adaptations to what is going on within like popular music popular culture uh definitely like divulging into pro wrestling a lot now oh. on that show it's just ever expanding like a big katamari ball of nonsense oh that's uh, matt's favorite game i love katamari <laughs> uh i have the soundtrack on vinyl obsessed matt does too obsessed. he's been trying to get it he's been trying to get it. haven't you matt <laughs> oh no oh this heat i love it um uh, and then of course there is screen snark uh which is a bi-weekly inter- interview podcast slash cozy casual conversation about just whatever you're watching whatever bring it what do you what's most recently past your eyeballs 
what did you think? Um, you know, keeping it easy, keeping it breezy. Um, and also, uh, I this is this is like the baby infancy project. Um, I am starting to learn to become a professional wrestler. Uh, oh yes, yeah. you did tell me about that. Yes, yes. yes. So that's that's in the that's in the infancy progress uh, for sure. I'm taking classes, Love learning it. secrets. It rules. Are there wrestling classes? Is that a thing you can do? Sorry, yeah, I just, I'm can, so, I, I've never watched wrestling. I'm very far wrestling removed. professional wrestling school. That's wild. I learned that and now I'm doing it. That's, That's so what we had to reschedule her the first time. She's like, I started taking wrestling classes. That's yeah. a great reason. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. scared to take wrestling classes. I've taken kickboxing. But then, like, the only days I could go were the days when they did, like, serious PT, and so I opted out of it. <laughs> I just like the kicking and punching. Mm. I don't want to do, like, the laps and all of that stuff. Oh, yeah. The cardio is killing me yeah. right now. I, oh my I was just, like, coughing because it's March, and I could just feel my ab muscles, and I was like, <laughs> I just want to get magically ripped. I don't have to do the work for it. Right? I just want to get it's marble bogan. ripped without doing anything about it. Is that right. so yeah. much to ask for? Just bring me just bring me a very competent airbrusher. It'll be perfect. Right? I know. It's just come draw on. them on, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now oh. we know what kind of six packs you like. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I, I guess the other projects that I'm involved in uh, is an acapella group called Choirfly, um, a, a currently on hiatus comedy band called Afterbirth Monkey. And then um, wait, a, wait, a, wait, a, hold on. Yeah, after Afterbirth yes. Monkey, you have I'm to very, explain I'm that very name. sorry. Uh, <laughs> 2014. What the fuck were we doing? Oh, am I allowed to curse here? Yes. I should yeah, yeah, to. yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, so good. Yes. What? <laughs> you know it, it, young theater kids in new york okay realizing that they want to be creative can't really find that outlet make their own outlet of 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 beer jokes and dick humor and all to like the sounds of a she and him kind of vibe it's <laughs> it's it's the it exists i'm talking about it i won't hide from my past it's my, there my day just got better just by hearing the words after birth after monkey, birth monkey. Yeah. because there is something uh, about that combination of words that inherently yeah. makes me makes me laugh inside so thank you for yeah. that no, no it was definitely not planned we went to an open mic night for fun and my bandmate mark just called us that and we were like we'll change it later <laughs> you know like it was really like that's just the working title because like these oh songs my are kind God. Of and then everybody was like don't change it don't change that name so Thanks, weird open mic crew in Astoria, Queens. <laughs> you ma you made my history. That's incredible. Uh, like, yeah. I, it's I'm just trying to figure out how you would even think. I don't think I've even thought of monkeys and afterbirth in the same thought until today. Well, and it's I'm a welcome. little squeamish, I, and yeah. at the same time, I'm like, that's like pretty a little, incredible. Like a little, like a little baby after after it's born, monkey. You know, like yeah, uh -huh. you can just parse it that way. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh. It's, it's not a it's not a, it's not it's actually not a, after birth it's monkey. just like a that's it's just kind of what yeah, we like it's, it's yeah like a, it's, it's like a, a baby, baby monkey, monkey. Yeah. our first album is a pixelated baby monkey holding a guitar in a bottle though so oh like, that's cute wait you have an album oh we have two uh one sort of like demo uh, -huh. uh called us uh, i think it's called stuff about stuff um, see i love then, that stuff yeah, about then, stuff and then we made a, a studio recording, which is really nice. We uh, recorded it at the Ice Plant uh, in Long Ooh. Island City, New York. Uh, okay. How do I remember that? Um, and it's called Making a Beeline to Wasted. And it's a concept album in which we party too hard and fuck your boyfriend. Oh, that sounds great. And, and this is under the name Afterbirth Monkey. Afterbirth Monkey. So uh, I mean, like, that would make sense. Is it on Spotify? Yeah. Hell yes, it is. I My bandmate, we added like, video footage to it. So you have video footage to it yeah, on the oh Spotify. God, I, I it doesn't work for like, my phone though. It makes me crazy. This I feel is like terrible. we should play a little a clip of it at, at the end. We should play a little Ooh. clip of it at the end of this podcast. That would be great. Ooh. Do we have permission to play some after we have? at the end of this yeah, podcast? Totally. Okay, wonderful. Oh my god. Yes. Yeah. So there's that. Guys, and also, I was a burlesque dancer. It doesn't matter. What? That's how I met Matt. 
<laughs> also, can we just can, hold on? Like, I should we, nap more. Right? <laughs> I have a few years off, and we get to go outside once. And I'm like, remember when I was a juggler and an acrobat <laughs> and a tax salesman? You know, like that's how I feel. This is what spring is doing to me. Hi, I'm at, how are you? you are, I but I'm, I'm well. How are you? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to circle back to the fact that like. We we talked about how busy, you know, Storm is all the time. And here you are, like, talking about the multiple podcasts that you're on, the wrestling classes that you're taking, the multiple other projects that you're a part of. What, are Do you just meet in this, like, superhuman time vaulting area together? And you're like, you know what? Yeah, we have time for all the hundred things and make them all awesome. No, I'm just really good at Google Calendar. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a fucking fact. I also, could I think not do half the things that I do if I did not have a digital technology being like, don't forget, you've got uh, things. There's that little <laughs> colored block. Don't forget things. the thing. Things are I happening. also think that when you're doing things that you enjoy, it doesn't seem like you're doing a lot. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like when mm-hmm. you enjoy it, it just, I'm going out to like drink and have chicken fingers. And that doesn't seem like a job to me because I love it. Even if it were a job to go <laughs> yeah. around and be a chicken finger taster of different restaurants. That'd be a dope job though. That's a it? that's a new podcast idea right there. <laughs> we're just coming up with all the ideas today. Yeah. Professional chicken finger reviews. Wouldn't that be Ooh, amazing? You could, get, you could get the ASMR crowd as well. Oh, just like, yeah. Make it like a mukbang kind yes. of Listen, review. We, I've, I've told Destiny before, and like she knows this, but like she she has a hot voice, and like you know what I mean. Like like we she's talked about starting like yeah. a sex positive podcast so many times, no, and I'm like, listen, I have not. You you have. I have not. I said I didn't want to. Do- Wait. Oh, you mean like just a podcast? Okay, sorry. I yeah, was that's thinking- what I said. Okay. The, the reason. <laughs> What did you think I said? No, I thought you said that. Okay, the thing is, is that, like, I was talking to this random guy once, and he was like, oh, your voice, you should, like, read, like, erotica. Like, you should read erotic novels and do a podcast. And I was like, no. Because I don't want to be known for, like, that's the hot, like, the chick who reads hot sex novels. Yeah. I mean, it's a good idea, but it's not for me. Oh, I I do have to say, though, I... I adore a good like erotic audiobook. There's one guy that I've really fallen into recently, Chuck <laughs> Tingle. Oh my um, god. How is Darren not here for this podcast? Chuck our, Tingle. Our other, I'm writing it no, down. We've we've looked at this before, Destiny. We have gone down this rabbit hole once already. <gasps> oh my yes. god, we did. This is this is the erotic fiction writer who's like pounded in the butt by a jet blue plane or something. Oh my god! Yeah, and there we went from that to dinosaur so... erotica. Yeah, I he, definitely he, remember yeah, that. Chuck Tingle has dinosaur erotica and a tabletop RPG game called <sighs> Bad it, Boys and Buckaroos. But is it sexy or is it comedic? It like, can funny? be. It actually can be. Really? Um, I bring this up because there was a group <laughs> of um, uh, Maximum Fun adjacent and Maximum Fun podcasters who mm-hmm. did a podcast version of the Chuck Tingle novels. And I listened to the audio of one, and I was like, "I, I'm having feelings about this Tide Pod. Oh no, <laughs> what is happening? We're giggling, we're having a good time. Then I it like if he like kicks into interviews. gear, and you're just like, what? I'd like to I'd like to just shout out. Uh, I I just googled him again. This is like the fourth time I've done this, uh, and I just want to <laughs> ca- shout out the book. Uh, this is the title. Absolutely no thoughts of pounding during my fun day with this kind T-Rex because I'm aromantic and asexual, and that's a wonderful, valid way of proving love is real. I mean, or you could just not be attracted to a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Who cares? But then where would the novel be? Exactly. I, I feel like I have to read the novel because I, like, what if the novel I, is this just is that? The Chuck, the Chuck Tingle novel. Everything in this world makes me horny, and I want to pound it, with the exception of a dinosaur. And that's the book. Oh, okay. How is this man Ooh, already he, on this? He has this he has so another one. Hard. The physical manifestation of Wordle pounds my butt as a slightly yep. frustrating but ultimately rewarding a meditative daily routine. This is brilliant. This is genius. Darren talk was about, on to something here. Talk about someone I, who like is doing the work right now. Just <laughs> I literally feel book, like he's just book, writing like book. the most crazy stuff and people are 
eating it up because it, it's that crazy. It's real, and it's also kind of. Is it good. better than Twilight though? Like, is yes. it better than Twilight? Okay. Yes, I never read Twilight, so I can't really. Are in touch with it. their emotions about wanting to. That's have, true. Have consensual That's... sex with their Tide Pods. Who are alive? It's not just like it's a just a Tide Pod. This Tide Pod also has autonomy. All right. Okay. They're all anthropomorphized. Sorry, should have led with that. Okay, because I was I was mad confused. I was like, mm. they all okay. have personalities. I think we guys just, let I us know just... if you would like us to try to get in touch with Chuck Tingle and, and like have him on the podcast and just have a conversation with him about what inspires him. We know sex inspires him, but I mean like his like characters and stuff. Because I honestly think that would be an incredible interview like i, I think, want yeah. to know uh, i think we just need to start a uh, a chuck tingle book review podcast like a like a book club we oh could gosh, do that I, I love that i want Rachel, you want to be a part of it i was gonna say yes. i think we have crew right here i mean like let's hello. just do it <laughs> hello oh my god hello. <laughs> i have to oh. catch up we have to catch up because i feel oh. like you've already read lots of the books i'm not i'm not there yet Oh my gosh. I haven't read a ton of the books, but I do follow Dr. Chuck Tingle on Instagram. And it's one of the sweetest, most wholesome and weird follows you could ask for. Just like Okay, I'm gonna have to follow him too. Yeah, you know, just proving that love is real and respecting your way, you know, and this like almost poetic kind of description of like self acceptance and the acceptance of others and how that that it that matters and that proves you know- love is real. That could also play into mental health. I'm not trying to like find a flip or a, a twist to this, but like that really is important when you think about that. And today, a lot of people are dealing with their sexuality and like coming to terms with things that they're um, going through. And I know I was talking to a friend not too long ago, a, lo- <clears throat> a bow, about long ago, a long, long, ab- yeah, long ago about um, me- like black men in particular having a really hard time coming out to the community versus like um, other uh, communities. And um, I don't know where I was going with this, but uh, yeah, we should start a book club yeah, and talk about the sexualization of dinosaurs and Tide Pods and all that kind of stuff. I just followed him on Twitter. So, okay. His, his DMs are open. So this, this is a road we might go. I down. mean, like, I feel like you should definitely message him at like, you should be the one mm-hmm. to message him. Okay. When this happens, All right. I'm ready. Wait, okay. no, I changed my mind. Rachel, you should be the one because you've definitely already, you're already familiar oh my. with his literature. And I feel like you might fangirl a little bit and you might need that. So I definitely think you should be the one to mess with I don't him. know. I hear, I hear he's hard to track down, but I might lead with. I heard you liked everything, uh, everywhere, everything, everywhere, all at once. I, I also like that. that movie. D- Dr. Chuck Tingle, may we talk about it sometime? Yes. Was it good? It looks so awesome. I want to watch it so bad. It was incredible. It was so disgusting and decadent and d- d- frenetic and yes. and and so tender and warm and loving and clean and just and wild. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. I love that we had disgusting Man. and clean in the same. So I definitely yeah. have to see this because like, I need to see like how fundamentally those as a film, it is very right. clean the way it is delivering its story. Mm-hmm. But like, it is it is very sexual at moments in a very disgusting comedic way. Uh, okay. And that's all I'll say. And somehow it still has an emotional crux to its third act, the sex. It's great. It's so good. It's okay. An incredible piece of, I of will, cinema. I'll watch it. I'll watch okay. it. Good. I was going to watch the second season of Bridgerton, but now I'm not. So I'll, I'll watch that. Cool. Yeah, I'm definitely going to check this out because it's been on my radar and I keep hearing fantastic things yeah. about it. And it just Everyone looks awesome. Everyone is banner in it. Everyone is knocking it out of the park. Okay. Yes. So good. Yes. I, that's oh, what I like to hear. Down. Make more movies with smaller budgets. You will be so creative. I think that's true. And I also think, like, let's just get different talent because I'm kind of tired of seeing the same faces in mm-hmm. absolutely everything. But that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> <laughs> whole nother topic. But, Rachel, back to you. Yeah. <laughs> now that we're off of uh, Chuck Tingle for a little bit, we will yeah. be contacting you soon. Um, 
tell us a little bit more about like I know you're into wrestling and everything but what kind of got you into doing podcasting because it seems like you've done a lot of different things up into that point and I know you yes. said you met Matt was he kind of like your gateway into it or have you always been interested um I, I think around the time that we were becoming more aware that the internet was going to be this way that we would get things done um, I was in the burlesque scene, so I was learning a lot about promoting myself and my brand through the internet, you know, like your Facebook posts, you know, like. Wait, were you a burlesque dancer? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how I met Matt. Um, that is incredible. I feel like you told me this and I completely forgot. It's okay. I th there's a lot going on. I've lived a lot of lives. I've run I am inspired. recklessly to whatever to the I nearest butterfly horizon going, that's, <laughs> that's interesting. Let's go. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Listen, just go, just go. Just run. You know, that's that's how it goes. Um, but so Matt and I were sort of running around in the scene. Um, you know, Matt doing more like DJ, MC stuff, you know, we both had a kin for nerd culture and and things and and then the idea of starting a podcast, like, started to stew. I started listening to podcasts, really liking this medium as well. Um, and then Matt was doing a podcast called Crash Chords, uh, where they sit down and they review an entire album, track to track. It's a very long affair, but a very fun affair <laughs> because it really... I was going to say it really forces you to listen to the record a lot, but it forces you to listen to the record like twice, you know, like once just through and then once we listen to the track, then we sort of talk about it, you know, and so you're really digging into it. So Matt had Afterbirth Monkey come on because we were also running in the burlesque scene because obviously we're singing about how, how dicks are raining from the sky, you know, as they do, as they do. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> boy, oh boy. Sometimes I think about the tracks on that and I go, yep. I made that choice. Uh, <laughs> so we came on with, uh, I think it was Katy Perry's Prism. All right. So we kind of got off track and um, <laughs> we're going to circle back around and ask what's new because we, we just got way into it. So I'm going to throw it to Rachel first. What's new, Rachel? What have you been up to? Oh, what's new? Uh, well, everything everywhere all at once uh mm -hmm. it, that happened to me uh recently and i can't stop thinking about it uh what a good th what a good thing to have happen i hope everybody gets a chance to check it in in their cinemas you know i hope it gets released uh more widely because it's really cool um and and then like obviously the wrestling school is new mm -hmm. um and my Dungeons and Dragons group picked up again. <laughs> well, nice. Nice. Yeah. That's so, awesome. That no, that's really cool. I think yeah. we were talking about doing a D&D &D, like uh podcast. We haven't had the time to do it, but we definitely want to do like a short series, like a month-long series to run yeah. around mm -hmm. campaign. It'll be a first for me, but Matt's definitely done it a couple of times. It's a lot of fun. I'm excited. I, I love I love playing pretend around a table. I just like making the character and then I get bored. So hopefully I can stick with it. I want us to be in costume. So that way I'm like more engaged, but we'll see. We're still like working out the logistics for that. But Matt, what have you been up to? Uh, I have been playing a whole bunch of Dying Light 2. Um, that game is, it's not perfect, but I can't stop playing it. There's just something about it. That's just inherently fun. Like, I like I have issues with it that I'll talk about on our review once I'm once I'm through it. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the, the the combat takes a little bit too long to kind of click along with the parkour. Like the leveling should be a little bit faster, but like it's just so much fun to play. Um, it's 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 I don't know. I'm I'm enjoying my my time with it so far. Uh, I keep messing around with the Steam Deck, and it's just that 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 piece of technology is just so cool. Um, and I'm excited to keep going with it. And uh, Senna and I have been playing Kirby, the new Kirby, which is just adorably awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like I have just like a, a, a big smile plastered across my face the entire time that I'm playing it. Uh, it's just it's just pure joy. Um, and like the challenges and stuff that you come across are actually pretty tough. 
Um, like some of them like are, are you know are actually take a bit of a, a couple of tries to kind of get through. So yeah, I've I've been playing a bunch of Kirby. It's been it's been really cute. I've been really enjoying it. Um, and yeah, I mean that's that's kind of it. Like it's it's just been you know I, I went to the off my, my, the office for the first time today at my job that I just started a month ago. So wow. that's been cool. People have been really nice, and you know being downtown Toronto is an interesting place to be again. I haven't been in a really long time. Um, so yeah, things things are okay. Just figuring things out day by day. Do you know? But what about you? What's been going on? What's new? Um, I've also been playing Kirby, but by myself. I've been soloing the game, and I really really love it. Um, but Minecraft has sucked me back into its loving arms. And so I've been obsessed with playing Minecraft and watching videos of other people play Minecraft because that's what I do. Um, I haven't been watching as much Pickle and Peanut. I still think you should check it out, Matt. It's a hilarious cartoon. I love cartoons. Um, I watched two series and every time we get to this point, I forget and I'm like, oh, I need to write this down. Um, and I didn't. So, but I did watch two very good series on HBO. One's like seven episodes. The other one's like eight. And one of them is like this woman who kind of moves back to town and her sister has just passed away and she's kind of getting like, um, I wouldn't say used to, but she's kind of like figuring out her life again and how she fits into this town. Yes, Matt. No, when you're done, I want to. Cont- I forgot about something, so I'm just putting it in my hand so I remember. Oh, okay. Um, and then the other one is from the guy. Oh my gosh, you guys are. Yes. High five me through the camera. I feel like I have to like stop because that's going to distract me. Um, Matt, what did you forget? I completely ripped through Fleabag over the weekend uh, on Amazon Prime. Uh, like I just tore through both seasons. That show is fantastic. It's so, so good. If anybody hasn't watched it, please do so. It's so weird and depressing and like, but also beautiful, but also awesome. Like, it's just, it's this whole, it's like only six episodes a season is about this woman who's living in somewhere in England, I'm assuming. Um, And like, it's just about her life and like the mistakes that she makes and like trying to be better and stuff. It's just, it's so good. So I just, I just wanted to shout that out because people have been talking about it for a couple of years now and I just never got around to actually watching it. But hell yeah, Fleabag is so good. It's so so good. I couldn't oh, yeah. stop I once I started. I watched the first couple episodes and then I fell off for life reasons. But mm-hmm. yeah, oof. Definitely Wait. go back. It's so good. Yeah, so gonna. so good. Rachel, your hand was also up. Yeah, oh, your hand yeah. Was up I too. I plowed directly through uh, Star Trek Prodigy, and it rules. It rules. It's my new favorite Star Wars. Oh, I okay. love it. Yeah, it's labor prison escapees stealing a starfleet ship and cruising around the universe with a hologram janeway are you kidding me it rips it rips so hard where is it where can you watch it at uh it's on paramount plus so it's like part of like the newer star trek okay thing they're doing check it out terrific it's animated too this looks cool yeah and all the characters are non-human so that it's makes great. sense. I mean, it's, yeah. De- yeah, let's decent, let's decent or Cubans, you yeah. know, in the Star that Trek universe. Maybe we should decenter the most prominent figures within the universe of Star Trek and make room for everyone else. Mm-hmm. If you, if you, if you're catching my my fucking drift here, mm. mm-hmm. you're hearing what I'm saying <laughs> through my teeth. <laughs> That's to all you Star Wars producers out there and writers. Like, I hope yeah. that you're catching her dress. Get it. Mm-hmm. Like, Get that dress. But, okay. Definitely not a metaphor. So while you guys were talking about, and, and you raised your hands, I decided I should go look up and see what I had actually watched. So the first series was called Somebody Somewhere, which is really incredible. Um, like I said, it's about this girl, like not this girl, but this woman who goes back to her small town and like her sister dies and she's trying to like figure out life there. And like she always kind of you find out that she never quite felt like she fit in there without her sister. There's like a lot of stuff going on, but it's so good that I like binged it. And then the other thing I watched because the guy from IT Crowd is in it and I can't think of his name right now, but it's called Family Tree. And, like, he gets left this box of stuff. So it's kind of like 
it's a little ridiculous, but it's really funny as he's trying to like discover like his ancestors and he finds out like every time he finds out something you think like, oh, it's super amazing. And then it's like kind of like shitty. Like he finds out that like one of his ancestors was an actor like way back in the day. But then he finds out that he was like um, part of this duo and he was actually the back end of the horse. And that was like his acting career. Aww, <laughs> so like, I love that. Respect you should the watch back it. end of the horse. Come Respect on. the back end of the horse. Yes. That's, they're doing the work back there. I mean, yeah. And evidently, like, the, the guy who was the front end, like, farted in his face and, like, they never got over it. It was just, like, this huge thing because that's, like, a big faux pas. But yeah. you should definitely watch it. It's called Family Tree. So if you guys have HBO, check those out and also check cool. out Pickle and Peanut. Yes, Matt. I forgot about another thing. Good God. What? Well, it's it's relevant. I watched the first episode oh. of The Halo Show. Um, oh, because that's, okay. Because oh. I started last week. Right. Uh, it yeah, was it, fine. It, 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 it's oh, fine. Wow. It's fine. That does um, not sound exciting. Like you're like listen, you said, it's fine three times. Yeah. Um, the CG is a little rough around the edges throughout most of it. Uh, mm. But like the human characters that they've introduced are actually pretty interesting. I I actually don't care about the whole chief taking off his helmet thing. Like it it works in the context of what they're doing with the show. Um, the writing is a little the writing is a little hit or miss. There there is there are some good parts and there's bad parts, but I enjoyed it enough to look forward to the next episode. Um, and I know there's a lot of people very upset about him taking his helmet off and stuff. Like, I also just think that people need to realize that this is like a separate thing. Like it, it's, is it's he own never thing. supposed to take his helmet off. It's like, a, is that, it's, why is that? It's a thing in the games. It's a thing in the games. It just is. He's taking but his helmet. You can imagine that, that your head is in about the helmet. The stupidest shit. I swear. I'm very angry that this halo actor doesn't look like me. This just thing. the dumbest the dumbest stuff people get upset about like yeah can we like, not i understand people care a lot about this franchise and stuff but like this is they, they already said like this is not tied to the games this is not following the same like the same storyline like it's its own thing so like let it be its own thing anyways it was it was fine like i said i guess i would be upset if like they cast storm and like she didn't have white hair. I, I guess. I guess I'd be upset. I can understand people being upset, but I also think that people just need to let things be the way that they are. I was being right? sarcastic like, about that. No. I don't I mean, care like, what color hair she has. Yeah, the thematic functionality of needing the helmet to stay on is completely different right. when removed from the interactive medium of gaming. Mm -hmm. Like first person shooters are essentially there to make you feel like you are the sh like you're the one you're the shooter you. yeah it's a power the fantasy zombie, yeah like, that's the thing like this is so do they think he would just like have the halo on i mean like the helmet on all the time like he goes yeah. to bed with the helmet on he uses the bathroom yes. with the helmet on he's the man he eats his food with the helmet on he's he's taken it off like three or four times in like in the context of like the games mm -hmm. but it's always like you just kind of see him holding it you never actually see his face so people are so very are people upset, upset that, that they saw his face is that what it is they saw his face and that he was like talking and emoting like an actual human being how how dare you show this human face so that i might empathize with it in your story we yeah. all knew he was a human though right yeah and like I said, I, okay. I think I think it actually works well in the context of the scene that it's in. Like it, it makes sense. So yeah, that's what I mean. Like there's parts of it that look very uncanny valley. There's parts of it that just look a little strange where the aliens don't look like they just look like CGI rendered in. But like and like some of the story choices are a little weird. But again, it was fun enough. I enjoyed my time with it enough that I'm actually looking forward to the second episode. So, um, you know. That's what, that's, that's my scary. last thing that I want to throw out there because again it's a it's a high profile series that I know a lot of people have been looking forward to and it's video games so why not but anyways I can't get mad I was yeah. upset about bologna sandwiches so yeah you were moving on because it doesn't make sense moving doesn't on make sense. no it doesn't it's a perfect paper no, we're not gonna do that no okay <laughs> sorry Rachel. hold on very quickly Rachel if if you thought of of a food that may be a paperweight would would a bologna sandwich perhaps be a good paperweight if it were a food. I phrased that perfectly. If it were food, it is a Wait, food. Are you are you asking me if I would consider in a pinch? Oh no, sudden wind uh, right. through my window. I have no, sandwich. absolutely a fucking not. No, no, Rachel, no, <laughs> that is not what that is. That is no, a, that is not what that is. No, it's, Rachel, it's, don't it's, answer because that's it's, not it's, what that is. That's not what that is. Okay, no, that's Rachel not knows. what that is. It is literally no. 
it is literally you have some important documents. You leave the room. You have uh -huh. two bologna sandwiches and you put one here and here so the wind doesn't blow it away. There are other objects in the room that could act as a paperweight and you use two bologna sandwiches to put on top of important documents. Would mm -hmm. you do that? Did my bologna sandwich come on a plate? No. Okay. This is not a hard question. I don't, <laughs> want, I don't think yeah. I would want to use the bologna sandwiches. I understand but I'm your not, decision. I'm not going it. to fence myself in and limit myself to say that I wouldn't. This Thank is you. the most non-answer that, that I is can the, give. Yeah, this is for playing to both of us. So <laughs> overwhelmed you know at this concept. What? what I'm Matt? just going to say... Are there more wheels or doors on smart. the planet Earth? This is smart of you, Rachel. <laughs> You're stepping away from this argument. But that Matt. was brilliantly put. That was brilliantly handled. We're not going to continue the Thank discussion you. now. We're going to save that for a future. I'm not going to shame anyone for a baloney sandwich bring it up. choice, and then be like, "We're not We're going to." That's I'm not shaming on, okay? them. It just doesn't. Nah, -uh. you better shut the fuck up. That's no, on. listen, listen. I don't like when you do this. I don't like when you bring something up and then anyways. you're like, let's move on. No, yeah. not anyways. No, we will. The rest of the show will be about bologna sandwiches on important papers if you don't shut up and let me say what I have to say. Also, mustard danger. You have to be considerate of mustard danger. Fair I'm point. just saying, you're not going to argument. use a sandwich. It's a fucking logical. You're not going to use food on an important document. You're not. That's just, that doesn't make any sense, especially if yeah. you have other things there. Do you know that how expensive could... printer ink is in this economy? In Arcane, I don't even know. I had it to go to arcane. the library for this set of documents. I'm not going back out there. March is a disaster. Yeah. March is a disaster. Pollen True. everywhere. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see Matt again because I'm going to remember this and it's anyway, going to get physical. Every yeah, time. no, no, no. I did remember the thing about Darren. It just took a couple of days. But I will mm -hmm. because yep. you'll bring it up. You'll bring it. You you'll fucking bring it up again. Anyways, Anyways. Rachel. Anyways, back Wheels to you because yours. you're you're Go the ahead. person that we should Pontificate. be talking about. Listen, I always Matt is he is asking for it, man, and I'm trying not to be <laughs> violent, but <laughs> whew. good it's good heat though. <laughs> nice tension. You love it. Oh my god, his friends are gonna love this episode mm -hmm. definitely. That's mm -hmm. why. Hello, it. Matt's why? friends. Why what? Hi, my friends. Don't know. Anyways. <laughs> there you are. Hey. Hey, you. Want to match? I'm so sorry we got here. up on oh. summer. Rachel. Hey, okay, well. so back to you. <laughs> I don't know. Because I'm very interested in Matt's like friends who are listening. Talking about, they're <laughs> always listening. He has like a great group of friends. Like he listening. really does. They're always they're listening. They're always listening. They're always there. Wow, this has just gotten. I don't even know like where we were like we were talking about what we did and i don't remember what we talked about before my mm. camera went off but i feel yeah. like we were talking about you and what got you yes, to the point of it podcasting was. we <laughs> were talking about Katy perry's prison there we go there we go we came back around matt's podcast and matt and i had, had been buds before that you know like you do um and i brought up the the concept of maybe starting a podcast with him and as all good things in my life uh occur uh, we did it once and then we didn't do it again for another year it's kind of like <laughs> the thing where where it works where it's just like we did this that was great oh it's been a calendar year do we want to keep doing that checking in again um one so year anniversary secret episode that was our original pilot i don't think it's ended up on because we didn't know the format when we did the first one you know, so we weren't really doing the like, what is the thing you were most recently watching, which kind of <laughs> was born in the moment while we were in Matt's apartment for the first, the second first episode, not the first first episode. And mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, that's a good idea. I like that. It's very low maintenance, you know, get, get yourself a, a podcast format that takes as little work as possible. Mm -hmm. Because like, it's not really about what the movies or tv shows are about because a lot of times you come into it and you haven't seen the thing that that person has has brought you know it's really about hearing the experience of one person and how they interact with the story i really liked this or i took issue with this some of the theming i found to be 
a problem, which is why we don't always interview film and TV creators or critics. Right. You know, we're pulling all kinds of people, yoga instructors, you know, or less dancers, musicians, because we're all kind of relating to these stories in our own way. And the more we hear how other people relate to them, the the more we get to understand ourselves and each other and the media we're consuming, you know, it's kind of like a free education of the human soul, you know? And then I make butt jokes. <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> um, so yeah, sorry. That's, that got real philosophical near the no, end. No, that's but amazing. That's how we started podcasting and my justification for why it's so easy. Well, also <laughs> movies and, and television is such a broad topic, right? And like, Tons of people watch movies, so there's always somebody giving their opinion or, like, their experience with it, and what one person might have felt is completely different than what another person might feel. So I think it's a really good kind of basis, like, foundation for a show to kind of pull off on. It, same with us. Like, everybody has has struggled at some point with mental health, right? Um, a lot of people, games keep growing. Like, everybody's, like, getting into games, even if it's, like, just on their phone. Mm -hmm. So I think... I, I really like what you guys are doing because I know when I was on, we got to talk about shows that like we had been watching recently and what we liked about them. And it also helped me be like, oh my God, that sounds really good. I want to check that out. And I think it was like, you were talking about some weird kind of <laughs> fantasy yeah, version I was of talking like talking about the some fantasy bullshit. <laughs> yeah. It was it was the king's daughter. Yeah, and I that's what it was. Need a, I need physical media of that movie. I for, I will be the sole archivist for this movie. It's so bad. I love it so much. Oh. I saw it and I was like, oh, let me like this. But then I started reading it and I was like, no, I'm not going to watch that. But then after you went on about it in the podcast, I was like, okay, I definitely have to see that. Because it looks stupid in the it, first place. And, <laughs> and, that, and follow that feeling all the way through because it is stupid. <laughs> but I will. I will definitely check it out. I will. Oh, there's mermaids Pierce in it. Yes. yes. Oh, there okay. All right. I just I have to give this to Matt. I'm so sorry. Everyone. No, do it. So uh, The King's Daughter was originally filmed in like 2014. Okay. And got released in 2021. Or tw no, got released this year in 2022. Mm -hmm. And you can see why. It's a mess. I think they tried really hard to bury this movie and just couldn't anymore. And it rules. It does not understand anything. I, I, I love it. I think I have to watch this. Yeah. It's it, weird it, that it, Pierce Brosnan signed on for it. Like, it's I'm weird just that really Pierce Brosnan is King Louis the Fourteenth. Like. That's true. And he wants to kill and eat a mermaid so he can live forever because he's such a special king. Hey, so this is a this is a funny uh, kind of uh, through line here. Um, the guy that plays Master Chief in Halo is in this movie. Oh, he's the, oh, right. <laughs> nice. the uh, he's the sailor guy. Pablo, Sh I don't remember, don't know how to pronounce his last name, and I apologize. Schreiber, Schreiber, Pablo Schreiber. Schreiber. Okay, he's Master Chief. So if you want to see his face and also Pierce Brosnan's, this movie is the movie to do it. I yep. always want to see Pierce Brosnan's face. And it's if nice you face. want to see a nightmare fuel mermaid face, this movie's for you because that mermaid looks so bad. Ooh, is it like scary on purpose? No, bad? just oh, it's just terrible. It, okay. I don't think they understood that they needed a budget to do this special effect. Mm. And they spent it all on prom dresses from Cachet that everyone would have canonically been wearing in the court of King Louis the Fourteenth. Mm. I love uh, this. I know I keep saying terrible things about it. Best time I've had in the movie theater in like forever. Well, it's like you know, the movie Cry Baby, where it's so bad but you love it because it's, it's so like, bad. This is oh insanity. This okay. is. You can spend. $25 to watch this on a uh, YouTube video or Amazon Prime video. Wait, why $25 just to that's watch how, it? That's how much it costs. To buy it or to rent it? Uh, no, it. this says watch. <laughs> so an indeterminate Absolutely contract not. here. Absolutely 
not do not do that. that's not even it that's not even you get tickets cheaper for that with popcorn my monthly movie pass thing is less than that for a month of unlimited twenty five dollars. It, it is twenty five dollars Canadian to rent this movie on That's on on much. online platforms. No, what? That no. has to be a typo. That, no, 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 no. This is across That's- Google Play, Apple TV, Amazon Prime, and YouTube. It is twenty four ninety nine across all of them. Meaning what's that the score? They- what's the score for it? Like, what's Rotten Tomatoes give this? Eighteen percent. And they want people to pay twenty five dollars. No, 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 no! They don't want people to pay twenty five dollars. Oh, this, this is to is deter people from fashion. watching it. Are okay. you kidding me? Okay, no. Because I've never heard of that. I've never it, heard of a, a rental. It has being that to be. Expensive. This has to be. Or is this a money laundering scheme where they de- they maybe that's why this came out so much later after it actually did, and why they're charging such an exorbitant oh, no, 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 rate no, no, to no. watch the, it the number They're of like, title screens that they have before the thing starts this baby was in development hell <laughs> like it's uh producer after producer after producer after producer and not all of them are in english Three, it's four, five, six, perfect. seven there's seven producers yup i wonder who pushed for the movie to get released Anyways, guys, go check anyway, it out if you yeah. have $25 that you want to waste. But also don't. <laughs> Truly don't. <laughs> Please don't do this. You can't no. believe anything Rachel says. She's literally like, you have to watch this. the most terrible thing ever. It's so amazing. You, you I need merch for it. Me, and then she's like, but don't pay for it. Yeah, if you, I guess don't. if you can like, I'm, if a friend does sail, it. Sail, sail the high seas per chance to find this movie. Yes. Okay. Or Let's say it that way. Okay. Watch it when it is more cost efficient because right now mm. this sounds like a bit of a I can't spindle. believe it's that much. Yeah. I just saw like turning red for free, basically, yep. on Disney Plus. And it ruled. It yeah, rocked. turning red. Uh, turn, turning red was really great. It was so uh, good. I saw it's this exactly meme the other what day. I went through when I like, started my period at 13. I saw this this oh I know me too. I turned into a giant red panda. Um yeah. I, I saw this You're meme always the other PMSing. Always. Um <laughs> I saw this meme the other day that was like, old Pixar killed your parents and then made mm-hmm. you feel bad about it. Nowadays, Pixar gives you the parents and makes you deal with it. Yeah, I saw awesome. that meme. No, that I is saw kind first. of what's good. No, you didn't because that's not I even saw what they said exactly. Verbatim. Like paraphrase it terribly. Wow. So why are we fighting today, Matt? God, you're just showing out because Rachel's here. Anyway, I'm having fun. I'm not hosting, so I'm just I'm just along for the ride. Oh, Anyways. I'm gonna I can't wait till you host again. I'm gonna let you fuck that show up so what bad. You? Yo, no, nothing. Nothing. Anyways, Rachel. Anyways. <laughs> I'm living for this. <laughs> fight forever. No, it's exhausting. Matt that. could no, go it's... on forever. He could definitely yeah. go on forever. It's exhausting. But one of the questions that we always like to ask our guests is because we do talk about mental health and it's so important for us is, is there a game or um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a game. We've had to change it up because some people aren't gamers like that, but Mm -hmm. um, a form of media that's gotten you through a tough time. Um, Yeah, I I think there's a lot of things. Uh, Definitely like early on in the end of the world, the, the giant panini, uh animal crossing i think was one of those things that just <laughs> it's it's a big giant panini like it is, it is. it's getting bigger by the day a big um, panorama just, <laughs> i hate it um but that was one of those things that was just like oh right we can find meditation and peace in playing games and that sort of like kick started an even deeper appreciation for gaming as as not just a way to pass the time when we're trapped indoors, but a way to feel interactive in a safe way. You know, obviously, like playing a game and beating a boss, like that's dopamine, like mm-hmm. the chemical reaction of like, I did a success. Ooh, those good feeling brain chemicals really could use those in the hellscape. Mm-hmm. Uh and so it started my my desire, again, moving from just someone who likes to watch other people play games into, I want to be someone who can play these games. You know, I 
I never really like mastered the skill of video games. I always used to joke that I had like dumb thumbs, you know, it's like, I just don't get it. You know, I can't like coordinate well enough. Um, and what I didn't realize is there's so many different types of games now exactly. that you can really yeah. find that niche and it kind of opens the door to other things like this idea of like okay like you played a game where you're in one cam just running around in like a two-dimensional space you know mm. okay let's maybe build on that maybe you have to jump over things you know like maybe there's an element of win loss you know and just like allowing yourself to get like pulled further in and by the end of all of this i'm like two seconds away from beating Calamity Ganon in my own run of Zelda Breath of the Wild, you know, yeah. going from I can never play a game where you control the camera and the character to going, I'm going to kick Ganon in the butt. <laughs> like, and and I think allowing yourself to, to be willing to learn or grow, I think can be really restful and healthy and restorative. I think it's why we all got into baking bread at the beginning of this because <laughs> you know if we just wanted to learn something you know if if baking bread is like you're playing video games you're tapping into the same chemical reaction mm -hmm. like you're tapping into that i did the thing you know and i think that's kind of what gaming brought to me in this time and and why i'm like okay what's a what's a different harder game let's try some fighting games let's try a, a, a visual novel you know and it just kind of being indoors made me more hungry for like the indoor activities that I didn't get into as a kid <laughs> it's a little reliving your childhood it's a little like mastering a new skill it was just a really great way to vibe and feel like something in life was progressing forward so right. definitely like Animal Crossing Breath of the Wild um, definitely dabbled in Katamari by myself and I am a god awful at it i'm so bad at katamari i'm just not fast enough i'm doing my best um the king of all cosmos is so disappointed in me <laughs> constantly i i find that so fascinating the way that you kind of painted that picture just because like i i like thinking about just especially with the with the giant panini and just like a a lack of progression that people may have been feeling like like you said, baking bread or whether it was anything else that people new hobbies that people kind of took on just to kind of feel like they were growing in some way, shape or form. I never really considered that. And I find that such a fascinating idea because my partner got like super deep into animal crossing too. And like, similarly, she is not like a gamer. She'll play, you know, a couple things here or there. And now again, like she spent some time with breath of the wild and like the last couple of weeks, because like we had our own stint of the, the panini here at home. Um, she's in all over again now. And it's like one of those things where she's like, you know, on the message boards and like on the guides being like, how do I do this? And just the feeling of progression when everything else might feel like nothing's moving and just to feel like you're, you know, growing in some way. I think that's such yeah. a beautiful way to phrase that because it's not something I'd consider it in that specific way. Yeah. You know, and I think that that's kind of what everybody started to do. You know, it was not necessarily like I'm bored. I'm going to do something, but kind of gamifying your life. Mm -hmm. in a satisfying way and like some people gamified their life by playing actual games and others got into knitting or really like found a, a certain type of cinema that they've never been aware of before and are suddenly like I could tell you everything about Korean cinema now you know like not me personally but like I was just trying to pull an example from the air I can tell you nothing about Korean cinema because it is vast and wide and anyone who says they can explain all of any cinema has too much time on their hands or is lying <laughs> uh there you go Mm -hmm. um, but you know like that idea of like allowing ourselves to experience newness in a space where newness is kind of inaccessible you know like it's mm -hmm. the same it's the same walls the same door you know and like how do you how do you add variety to that and for me that was gaming you know mm -hmm. I think learning something new sorry Matt what That's were good. you gonna say no no go ahead no go no, I was just going to ask, like, what what was it about gaming at that moment that kind of brought you in? Like, was it was it hearing about Animal Crossing? Like, what was it at that top point in time that it wasn't knitting or it wasn't baking bread, for example? Like, what was it that about games that you were kind of like, this is the time that I want to try it? Oh, don't get me wrong. I definitely baked bread. Um, but I, I had a switch, you know, 
that okay. it was as simple as that. Like I had I had the Switch um for like Mario Kart, you know, more party games and it was like, yeah. oh, this is a nice mobile console so I could probably get into something pretty simple by myself or like play games with my partner and like co-op. Um so it was mostly just like I already had the technology and Animal Crossing was really cute. I thought Pocket Camp was adorable if not detrimental to the system of gaming with you know loot boxes and like spending actual currency in games for no reason um Mm -hmm. but other than that i was like i want to play with couches and an eagle man that sounds (laughs) and then of course the prospect of like it's an island and you get to do whatever you want with it that like that sense of creativity and then even that online element, you know, trading in a community of like bells for turnips, you know, like it even prompted the stock market. acting the stock market. acting interpersonally <laughs> without being in person. It just honestly, it, Animal Crossing was just one of those lightning in a bottle moments where it's just mm-hmm. like we could not yeah. replicate that if we tried. It yep. just kind it of came out at the right time. Yeah, like this perfect moment of just this is kind of what everybody's needing and into and like offered so much not to enhance our lives, but to like maybe calm the like intense fear and apocalyptic behavior of just like, can I come visit your island and talk to your little animal friends and mm-hmm. and see what, where you decided to put your museum, you know, and I think that was a really great community building project on top of just being this nice mode of progression and the fact that it moves in real time too, mm-hmm. you know, I think also really was a benefit for it where it's like, oh, I'm feeling it's morning and so is this character like seeing the sky change color and the shadows move and also just because that game is so pretty it's soundscape it's color palette it's very soft line work it it, you just can't help but feel calm when you play it Mm -hmm. yeah one of my favorite moments was actually like with destiny um like because we were all playing it at the same time obviously um, and I, I, you know, Celeste showed up on my island and I was like, oh, there's going to be like a, a meteor shower tonight. Like, and it was myself, my partner, Destiny and Darren all like met up on my island that night. And we hung out for like 45 minutes, just like running around my island and watching the stars. Like, and again, that like never really happened again to that extent. But like, I, I just, have yeah. such, <laughs> but, but legit, like that, that hour it was, was nice. just, it was just, like, it was just such a nice moment yeah. that like, I still think about sometimes. Yeah. That's like you, sweet. you found a way to connect without actually being in each other's physical space you know that's really cool and like the avenues that this provides for connecting for creating i haven't touched my animal crossing because i did flatten my island and i regret it (laughs) and i don't know how to fix it i've made it i've made a terrible error i thought i was gonna be cool and be able to like design things like i watched on youtube and i'm like nope i don't understand this so i just got a flat island my island just looks like a normal island, but I do watch some of those videos where people are like doing all kinds of wild and creative things, and I follow. I'm going to take Instagram. you to mid-century Venice. Yeah, and it's so like <laughs> there's like little Tokyo and all this at Disney, yeah. and I'm just like, I'll just go visit them in the dreams. Like my yeah. island just looks like an island, and people have houses. And that's about yeah, it. <laughs> that's I just de- I decided too. learning to pretend to fight was easier. Mm. But what I wanted to I'm say before my island, I decided getting beat up for entertainment is easier than redesigning my island. I feel like getting beat up is pretty easy. Like you could just stand there and get beat up. So it's true. It's true. Yeah. But the thing I wanted to say earlier is that um, learning something new can be rewarding, whether you're good at it or not. And something that you brought up was like, I feel like I had like dumb thumbs and I can't remember who we talked to, who they were like. They're really against the word gamer. I feel like it was Matt. It, it was Matt. He really doesn't like the word gamer because he, not you, Matt. Matt, but she has a podcast. My Matt. Her Matt. Um, Because, oh my God, I'm going to fucking hurt you <laughs> after this. You're but, right. Um, I am a podcaster. I have room for infinite Matt. <laughs> but um, 
because you don't have to be what this kind of traditional word that we've come up with to be a gamer. As long as you're playing something that you like, it doesn't matter if you're good at it. And I think a lot of people might be afraid to like jump into games sometimes because they feel like they're not good at it or they try it a couple of times. And then because there's this really negative kind of vibe about like, oh, you're not like an actual gamer because all you play is one game. No, I'm still a gamer. You know, I still enjoy games. But, oh, um, you're, you're not a real musician. It seems you can only play the violin. Right? So it, it's so stupid, like the whole gatekeeping thing. But I'm really glad that like you jumped in and you started playing games just to enjoy it for yourself. And you didn't let that kind of negative vibe stop you from enjoying it. Right? Like, look yeah. at you. You're like yeah. kicking Ganon's ass. And that's... I'm kicking, I'm kicking down all these gates that people Thank have been you. keeping. You know? And that's like, beautiful. Oh. You're going to be a wrestler. You were in burlesque. You have a podcast. Um... It was it after monkey afterbirth or afterbirth <laughs> after monkey? monkey. It's just and I you had so many incredible advanced. things. Like, no, because we're going to play that that I've grown at the end. As <laughs> I have, but I think I that's incredible. See, afterbirth monkey. I wrote it down. Uh, it's nice. incredible. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, uh. but uh, I mean, you've done so many things, and I love talking to people who have just dabbled in a little bit of everything I always find it like awe-inspiring and um to our listeners and you know the people who who follow us on our social media it's never too late to start something new or pick up something new like absolutely not like I never thought I'd be doing a podcast it was like the furthest thing from my mind I don't even like listening to other podcasts so I'm always like nobody's gonna like want to hear us talk but people do and I'm surprised every day (laughs) (laughs) but um We're probably going to wrap this up soon, but we do have some news that Matt is going to share with us. So, Matt? Yeah, we have one piece of news that we're going to touch on this week um, because it is a big story. Um, I'm going to pull from the PlayStation uh, press thing that I got because I'm not pulling from a website this time. Anyways, uh, PlayStation (laughs) has announced that it's going to be merging PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now together into a all new PlayStation Plus service. This June, it's going to be starting in Asia and then rolling out to North America and Europe um, as you know as time progresses. There's going to be three different tiers. This is it's kind of like Game Pass competitor. Uh, PlayStation Plus Essential will be the same PlayStation Plus that it is now. You'll get your monthly games, uh, some discounts, some cloud saves. Um, there are no changes in this tier. PlayStation Plus Extra uh, will get you all the benefits from Essential along with a catalog of up to 400 or more than, of enjoyable PS4 and PS5 games. Um, You'll be able to download these games to play. Excuse me. And the final tier will be PlayStation Plus Premium, uh, which is going to add another 340 plus games. Um, PS3 games will be available through cloud streaming, while PlayStation, PlayStation 2, and PSP games will be available for both streaming and downloading um, and like I said, and there's also going to be game trials in this uh, in this subscription tier uh, where you can try out new games, uh, you know, and see if they're for you. In terms of pricing, PlayStation Plus Essential stays at that sixty dollars a year USD. A PlayStation Plus Extra will be ninety nine ninety nine USD a year, while PlayStation Plus Premium will be one hundred and nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents USD a year. So there's been a lot of rumors. There's been a lot going on in the last couple of weeks. There's been a lot of talk for a while now on how PlayStation is going to respond to Game Pass because you know a lot of people do consider Game Pass to be one of the best deals in gaming, just in terms of how much you get. Um, there are no day one launches on PlayStation Plus. Uh, in terms of the Sony first party game. So you're not going to like with Game Pass, you get Halo day one when it comes out. Uh, PlayStation will not be doing that. They very much still like their, you're going to have to buy the new game and we'll put it on the service later on. Um, so yeah, we, we finally have confirmation. It is coming in June. Uh, personally, I am actually excited about it. I'm curious to see what the game list is going to be like. I'm sure they're going to get me at that highest tier PlayStation Plus oh, premium yeah, model because I'm a sucker. <laughs> I'm a giant sucker for all things PlayStation. Uh, and I'm curious to see, you know, original PS, PS games, PS2, PSP games is is all fantastic. And, I, I, you know, I'm excited to kind of jump in there um, and mess around with them. Um, but I understand how people are disappointed. I understand why people, uh, the day and date stuff was not anything I ever expected. Um, but PS3, that it's only streaming still kind of sucks. I know there's a lot of hardware limitations across the PS3 um, specifically. Uh, but I mean, if if the Steam Deck can run a PS3 emulator, I'm I'm pretty sure Sony could figure out if they wanted to put the money behind it. 
I guess they don't. But yeah, I just think this is cool. They also said it is going to be coming to PC, but they haven't really talked about that too much just as of yet. So it is possible that you'll be able to play PlayStation games through your PC uh, using the service. But yeah, I just wanted to open it up and see whether you, whether um, either of you had any thoughts about PlayStation Plus and their new streaming slash downloading slash backwards compatibility service and the price points where it's at. Um, D, any thoughts? Um, I think it's a smart move if they allow you to stream on PC. Mm -hmm. Um, just because I think like a lot of people are trying to, at least for me, um, have a system that can do multiple things. Like if I want to play games, but I also need to do some work, like, and it's all encompassing instead of having like a million different things that I have to use to only play certain types of games. So I think that's incredible. I hope they do that. Uh, so I don't know when they're going to come out with that, but I think probably when they do, that's when I would put my money in for it. Because right now, mm-hmm. all I have is like a PS3 and a PS4. And I rarely play them because I'm always sitting at my computer. Mm-hmm. You know? So so if if they are actually offering these on PC, like, for example, like Game Pass has its own PC service, right? Like, yes. similarly, like, this would be more in your alley if it is actually going to be on PC, which it seems like it will be, but they're not really talking about it. Um, so I don't want to confirm anything 100% as right. of yet, but that would be more up your alley. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm a PC cool. gamer, so. Mm-hmm. Rachel, what about yourself? Does this do anything for you? Are you interested uh, at all in anything outside of the Switch for now, or are you are you kind of happy exploring uh, that world? Well, my first uh, gaming console after the Wii, which everyone got the Wii, the, mm-hmm. of course you did, um, was actually a PlayStation 3. Um, nice. Yeah, well, I liked that it was also, like, a Blu-ray player. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, everyone did. It yeah. <laughs> became yes. my, my DVD player yes. as well. Um. So I haven't really been interested in upgrading my PlayStation. And I feel like if you're going to make a a model where you keep consistently replacing your hardware, I'm not interested. Like, I kind of want to be in for the long haul or a more adaptable haul. You know, I, mm-hmm. I like very much that we've had the Switch for so long. You know, mm-hmm. that it's that all of a sudden, like, I'm not locked out of new games because they're like, oh, it's only on the this one. The new right. shiny Tower of, of Sauron you got to get, <laughs> you know. Um, but I have a, I have dearly wanted to play that Ding Dang Spider-Man game. And if they make that available on computer, I I will shell out the money for that. Like, it's a good it's a good strategy to get more engagement you know like access equals engagement stop making things so exclusive if you want eyes on it if you want hearts on it if you want to pass along things but i i also think the liberation of of media to people is always good you know Mm -hmm. i'd love it if it was just free like that would be cool (laughs) that would be nice that would be very nice um yeah, so it seems like I'm just kind of reading back here that um, cloud streaming will be available for, P- for PlayStation, PS2, PSP, and PS4 games um, on PC as well. So they're not talking about PS5 games as of yet being able to run through PC, but at least you'll be able to stream, uh, you know, the the classics and even at the, everything up to PS4, which I mean, there's so on- many games, though. There are yeah. so many games mm-hmm. that like I haven't even touched and I'm sure that other people haven't touched because they just didn't have the system. Exactly. You know what I mean? And like with the PS5 being so hard to get and then it being like in a thousand dollars. Do you know what I mean? To like yeah. get it like it makes me not want to like like you were saying, it makes me not want to buy it. Like I feel yeah. like. I personally feel like, and I know people are probably going to shit on me for this, but like, I feel like my PS3 runs so well. (laughs) I don't know why I would want to, unless it was like a specific game. And then it's like, do I want to pay a thousand dollars for a couple of games I might be interested in? Mm -hmm. So I think if they're going to put it towards PC, because most people today, I'm not going to say everybody, but most people today have, have a computer right Mm -hmm. that can pretty much run some some games a lot of people have steam so i think um if they move in the way of xbox that would be great well especially because with streaming it doesn't matter how strong your computer is if you have a decent internet connection right you can have a a potato of a computer and as long as you can open up chrome you'll theoretically be able to do that right which is one of the great things about game pass because you can download or you can stream um so that's the kind of the asterisk there is that you just have to have 
stable internet, which I know everyone doesn't, which is unfortunate, but yeah. you know, at least in terms of some level of accessibility, if you have decent internet, you'll be able to play these games, yeah. which is nice. And if you don't, go to your friend's house, because that's how we used to do it back in the day. Yeah. yeah. And if, or if you don't, <laughs> organize with your neighborhoods and fight yes. for public utilities. Oh, my God. Land parties. I mean, like, we don't do land parties anymore. But still, that's awesome. Right. And that's all the news. Awesome. Well, guys, let us know what you think about the news, if you're interested in what they have to offer. And also, before we jump off here, because I really want Matt to uh, play a clip of your wonderful music, I'm going to say this right now. We are still running our fun- fundraiser for another two weeks for mm-hmm. Guardians Mental Health. We are raising money so that they can make these wonderful kits that they send out to people who need them, whether they're going through depression or anxiety. These kits are absolutely free. You don't have to pay for them. You don't have to pay for shipping. You just got to tell them you want one and they'll send one out to you, which is such an amazing thing. We also have some wonderful games. We have Xbox Pass. We have some physical copies. Matt, go ahead and run down those physical copies. The names yeah, we're get, we have Horizon Forbidden West for the PS5, Horizon Forbidden West for the PS4. We have Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition for the PS4, and we have Grand Turismo 7 for the PS4, along with three-month Game Pass Ultimate Codes. Lovely. So if you are able to donate, you will be, and I mean, like the minimum donation is anything, but if you can donate at least $10, that's how much it costs to put these kids together. We Mm -hmm. will put you in the running for one of these games and we'll ship it out to you. So please, please, please donate. And if you can't donate, share the information. We really appreciate it. And we appreciate you. Before we end, Rachel, can you drop your socials one more time. We will be putting them down in the bottom so you can just click on it. We do the work for you, but just so you can hear it. Yeah, um, you can locate me. I'm terminally online under the handle I am Rachel Corky. Um, I am I most predominantly haunt Twitter and drop the occasional post gym selfie. Uh, after I've done something particularly difficult for my body uh, and I'm sweaty and gross. Uh, but also there's my cat. If you want to see my sweet little cat, he has, oh, he's here. Oh, shit. <gasps> oh, hold him up. Sweet little cat. Oh, I love kitties. He's, t- he's taking a nap on the floor behind me. Oh, okay. Uh, Don't disturb him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's so precious to me. Um, but he also has an internet presence at the champion cat. Um, <laughs> he's on Twitter and Instagram as well. Um, he's sassy. I love him. Follow my <laughs> cat. All that stuff down there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we definitely have some pet lovers, some animal yeah. lovers who follow Okay, us. we get it. You're here. Quiet. I love you. <laughs> it's like I heard my name. I heard my what? name. <laughs> oh, Mama, you were plugging me. Oh. <laughs> Mama. Mama. <laughs> Drop my drop my handles. Oh my god, he's black. Yeah, he's my little void baby. He's my little pandemic kitty. So I'm gonna cry. Yeah, he acts like a dog. Really? (laughs) Yeah, he plays fetch and he misses us when we're gone. Adorable. He loves belly rubs. He's so weird. (laughs) So cute. Oh my god. And he never shuts up. I love him. That's so adorable. He's so you cute. I've already followed him. Audience, so I don't want you to think I don't want to follow him. I just I'm not emotionally ready to follow your cat. He looks so much like my cat that passed away oh. last year. That's why I was like I was gonna cry. But okay, I'm not okay. I'm gonna end this. <sighs> thank you everybody for coming and listening to our show. First of all, we want to thank Rachel for taking time to come out and talk to us. It has been an absolute blast, oh guys. Gosh. Like I said. We're going to have everything at the bottom. So click, go follow, go support because they're amazing. They're absolutely Mm -hmm. amazing. Thank you. And thank you so much for letting me ruin your show for like an hour and some change. No, it's okay. It was Matt mostly. (laughs) (laughs) It was awesome having you, Rachel. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Bye, guys. We'll see you in the next episode. Deuces. Peace. Big dicks, little dicks, everywhere it's raining dicks. 
When we started up a band, however could we know, we'd get a following of horny after bros. It really was a thing we never did expect. But when we play a gig, the wieners get erect. Infinite the numbers of boners that we see. I guess that's just the fate of after bros and tea. But we're really happy, cause we fucking rock. Yo, what lingo's next? We're, we're getting, getting lots of cops. cops. Been around the block, we've now made it a science of getting men in states of sexual compliance. Boxer shorts are dropping while we're comic shopping. It seems it's never stopping, all this penis popping. I'll diddle it a little in the middle of the set. You piddle while I fiddle kittle, now the stage is wet. It's like that, y'all. It's like that, y'all. They want to do us in the bathroom stall. It's raining dick, so many dicks. Here a dick, there a dick, everywhere it's raining dick. What up, AM? Forget the mother fellas, there's a storm a coming. I hope you brought your umbrellas. Singing in dick rain. Oh, you so hardcore. You monkey fuckers think that you can hang with a dark lord? Two red eyes, no heart. Yeah, I'm plenty sick with 20 dicks. That's right, I got 20 dicks. Five in my pants, five in my hands. I'ma use them. Ten pink dreads on my head. Cock Medusa. Throw them in the sky, way up into outer space where they will multiply. Rocket back to the planet's face. Sonic booms, fireballs, enter the atmosphere. Cock comets coming, crushing, calling out our end is near. Mushroom clouds, tidal waves, we are sinking. A downpour of dicks will bring our extinction. And then you two will die as I am next to you. So look, what I'm saying is I want to do sex to you both. It's raining dicks, so many dicks. Here a dick, there a dick, everywhere it's raining dicks. Suddenly, when we're out and about, maybe buying groceries, the pork sorts come out. Even at the ATM, trying to get our card on, the guy in line behind us jabs us with his heart on. At the bar, at the street, even in the movie theater, it never fails the yield of, yo, no, look at my here, here. It's like we can't escape the tally wax and dongs. And you, sir, you're getting so turned on by this song, because we're adorable, deplorable, our music makes you laugh. No wonder all the homies want to break us in half. You want us to stroke it, the something that you poke with, you think your branch is oak, and that's a funny joke. We're playing and we're saying all this stuff about stuff. You're swaying and you're praying that your junk is big enough. It's like that, y'all. It's like that, y'all. We're gonna sing that it's too damn small. After bros everywhere, now that your dicks are in the air, wave around like you don't care. It's raining dicks. Dicks, 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 dicks. dicks.